Hello, good afternoon. I thought I would have a, a little talk with you about some insight that I've been gathering and I'm trying to, I always try to theme my content in a way that it's, it's understandable to people walking a very similar journey to myself where you were living like a, like a normal life and then you get really sick and your whole life is completely changed and there's there's part of you that wants to just go back to how it was how it was before how, how what your life was like but as as I've been sick and as I'm healing I have gained so much insight and I've changed so much as a person and it's really hard to explain some of the concepts and experiences and new knowledge that I have at this point in my in my healing experience to people who I know are, are before because a lot of things that I heard when I was in the, the more beginner stages didn't make sense to me so a really good example that I'll use and this is something I just po I just posted in my stories and this was a comment on a, on a post that I just uh, replied to was oh, got a bit of a burp there just drank some drank some juice yes I do bring juice out with me so I've got my little uh, got my little lunch box I bring my juice I've got my my, my food I've got everything I bring it out with me so something that that got me was like the big the big issue I had was gut issues. It's like okay, so I've got this problem in my gut. What could the problem be? And the logic that I had, and this is the logic that I brought to gastroenterologist after gastroenterologist, and they just they just left me scratching. They just scratching their head. I said okay, so if if air in the intestine, if gas in the intestine can only be can only be present if it was swallowed or if it was produced by organisms bacteria, yeast, fungus, whatever it is, and I have excessive gas, and that's one of my biggest issues, how can an overgrowth of organisms in my gut not be a problem? And this was a, a, a rabbit that I chased down its hole for like two years, and it did not get me anywhere. And I'd had other people give me different insights, like I read the GAPS book, and Dr. Natasha was saying, this is all about balance, it's about restoring the, the microfloral balance, it's not that there's an overgrowth, it's that there's an imbalance. And I was like, no, it doesn't make sense, there's an overgrowth, I have too much gas, therefore I have too much bacteria, and I have to kill it, I have to kill it, I have to kill it. And I just chased this, like, let's kill it model for, for years, I took neem oil, oh my god, if you've ever tasted neem oil, like, oh my god, it was horrible, neem oil... Um, oregano oil, I used to do like 18 drops in a capsule three times a day, stupidly high dose. Um, I did allicin, I did um, grapefruit seed extract, I did, um, I did antibiotics, rifaximin and metronidazole, I did turpentine, literally if you can imagine it as, a, as, 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 a, as something that you take to try to kill pathogenic organisms in the gut, I did it. I did, I did Holder Clark's Parasite Cleanse, Black Walnut, um, Wormwood, and Clove. I used to eat cloves, I did I ate loads of garlic, I did all of the... I, I did everything. I literally just tried to destroy my, new, my microbiome. And it didn't get me anywhere. And saying these kind of things now, I get a lot of resistance and a lot of people pushing back at me when I say, stop trying to kill your dysbiosis in your gut, you are only killing yourself. And I can understand why, because two years ago, that's where, I would say that was more than two years ago. I'd say it's probably three or four years ago. That's where I was at, and anyone told me the same, I would say, no, there's an overgrowth, I have to kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. So I just chased this kill it rabbit for, for years, and it got me nowhere. In fact, it made me worse. When I finally took those antibiotics, God, that killed me. That gave, that, that's what moved my progression on from having really bad like fatigue and pain in my face and my eyes, and to full-blown chronic fatigue syndrome, can't get out of bed completely disabled, my dad was my full-time carer, I couldn't do anything, I was, just, I was a cripple, I was completely disabled. So as I killed more and more of my microbiome, it made me sicker and sicker and sicker. And looking at this from the perspective that I have now, and this is what I'm going to try to, this is the information that I'm going to try to impart into you today, is your microbiome is not the problem, it's an adaptive response to the situation you're currently in. So instead of looking at, say, a stool test or um, like a stool panel or something like that, or you did an organic acids test and it says you've got high levels of C. diff organism toxins or you've got high reactivity to candida albicans or something, whatever it is, whatever it seems like is overgrowing, 
instead of looking at that as the pathogen that's causing your sickness, look at that in one of two ways. Either, firstly, it's an adaptive mechanism that your body is employing to keep you alive. So it may present a symptom, but that organism is doing a job. And if you go in and try to kill it, you stop it doing that job, and therefore you are effectively killing yourself because you are destroying your body's inbuilt it, it has this wisdom and it knows the best way that it can try to resolve an issue. So it's trying to do that and you're stopping it and that's what makes you sick. Or it's opportunistic. It's there just because it can be. In nature, you do not ever see a vacuum. If you see what happens to old plots of land, old buildings that stop being lived in, like stuff starts to grow there. It's, it's natural. Stuff just, stuff grows everywhere. Wherever, wherever it can grow, stuff will grow. So your gut is a fertile soil and if you've done lots of killing protocols or you've been exposed to mold or you've taken antibiotics stuff has to grow there you cannot have like a, a vacuum there it's just not possible it's not how nature works something has to live there something will colonize so in that situation again it's about imbalance not about overgrowth if you put the organisms that are supposed to be there back there then your body wants those organisms there and it will employ them to do that and it will move them in and it will it will secrete IgA to attack these other things and these organisms will create substances which kill pathogenic organisms or, dysbi or dysbiotic organisms or opportunistic pathogens and it will restore the balance. So going in to try to fix the gut just by nuking it and constantly trying to kill it and destroy everything that's in there, in my experience personally and with every single one of my clients, it never works. It never works. Sometimes you get some immediate symptom relief and then you'll relapse. This is the root cause of why people struggle with recurrent SIBO infections. So you get SIBO or CFO or some kind of overgrowth in the small intestine, kill it with herbs or antibiotics, antimicrobials, and it comes back. And then you think, oh, it didn't work, I need to kill it again. And you do it again. It's like you're doing the same thing over and over again. It didn't work the first time, it doesn't work the second time either, or the third. It's going to keep coming back until you figure out this underlying imbalance that is promoting this this state in the gut don't look at the gut as the gut the gut affects everything it affects your whole body it affects the nutrients you absorb um, it affects intestinal permeability levels it affects your whole body if you're absorbing things from your gut that should stay in the gut and they're coming into your bloodstream it can cause autoimmunity fatigue depression anxiety almost everything almost every single symptom under the sun can really be caused by from stemming from the gut but the thing is, the gut and the flora is usually an adaptive response. It's, it's doing its best to seek balance for you in your current environment. And if you don't change that environment, the microflora either will not change, or you wouldn't want it to change because it's there to keep you in balance. It's there to, to restore this, this balance to your health so you can function as optimally as, as possible. Some, some loud people there hopefully they're not too loud for you so go into this with an approach of trying of seeking to restore balance instead of trying to eliminate overgrowth it, it really doesn't work it's always about balance um, some things that can perpetuate things that look like overgrowth are having one of the five pillars um, dysfunctional or inhibited so the five pillars these are the five primary core functions of the digestive system this is stomach acid digestive enzymes bile, motility, and mucosa. If one of these is off, you're predisposed to overgrowth. But again, so you go in and you kill these things, and you haven't restored the, the pillar that's, that's broken, it, the thing will come back, and then you've treated, and it will come back. So you have to make sure you're resolving these things that, that aren't functioning, that are allowing this this um, dysbiotic situation to occur in the intestine, and, and address that is the root. And the environment can go so much wider than that. So this is this is something that's going to be a bit out there to some of you, but it's something I know is true because I've experienced it and I've, I've seen it a lot as well. It's not just to do with your physical environment, it's to do with your, 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 your connection with yourself, your relationship with yourself and your relationship with people around you and with your family so, and, and, and with your relationship to your emotions as well. Like Something I've, re I've experienced is people who are holding a lot of negative emotion and they're unable to let it go, it's undigested, they usually have a tendency to have yeast overgrow in the in the in the gut, and this is because yeast or fungus in nature these are these are cleansers, these are cleaners, these are things that break things down. 
if you look at people who have um, mercury exposure, for example, mold or oh, sorry, not mold, like candida and yeast type organisms will move in to break these things down and, and digest them and eliminate them in nature. Mold, for example, is so you've got plasterboard and it begins to get wet. This is how your how nature is beginning to begin this degradation process and break things down. So say for example you're eating foods that you can't digest, add that with mercury that's coming in from your amalgam fillings or you've accumulated mercury somehow or some other kind of toxin that nature wants to break down that you don't have the ability to do, your body uses these organisms to do this for you. And the same I've experienced can be very true with emotion. Um, so, so you have fear, so you have sadness, so you have anger, resentment, you're holding these things, you don't know how to feel them, you don't know how to process them, you don't know how to discharge them and get rid of them. The energy has to go somewhere. Energy cannot be destroyed, it cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, it can only be trans transformed and transferred. So if you can't handle this energy, then your body is smart and it will employ organisms to do this for you. So this is why many people develop gut issues after they've had some kind of trauma. It can be a physical trauma, which causes some element of um, physical uh, sickness, but it can also be very emotionally traumatic. Maybe they aren't. Maybe they lost a loved one in, in the accident and they haven't processed that grief. Well, these organisms, your body employs them to, to, to process this grief for you, to manage this grief until you're able to work yourself through it and, and process yourself through it. So there's a strong energetic and emotional component to these things as well. And this is, this is where I'm at now. So I don't try, I literally wouldn't even try to do a killing probe. Like even if for some reason I was told that I had an infection, I had SIBO, I had a yeast infection, I had, I would not try to kill it. Because I understand that this organism is serving my body in some way and it's doing something. It's serving a purpose, it's fulfilling a, a role or a job that my body needs done. And if I go in and try to kill it, that doesn't make any sense because now I'm fighting against my body's natural healing wisdom. And remember, this is the same wisdom that when you cut your finger, say you, you cut your finger with a knife, you get a little cut. Do you have to sit there and think about it healing? Do you have to do, do you actually have to do anything other than make sure that it isn't being held open? You actually, you don't do anything, it heals itself. So try to look at it like that. What is, what is occurring in your environment, in your life, in your emotions, in your energies? that is stopping your body from healing itself. Because if you can move these obstacles out of the way, you will find healing. And it isn't just physical stuff, it's emotional stuff, it's relationships, it's your thought patterns, it's the way you behave. It's integrating previously suppressed facets of your of your conscious identity, of your ego. You have to do all of these things, because otherwise this energy is just flowing around and it's not being channeled by you, and it can't be destroyed. It can't go anywhere, it has to be utilized by something, it has to be processed by something, it has to go somewhere, so your body will employ organisms to do it for you. Very interesting, very alternative perspective on it, but I, did, I didn't start like this, I didn't come into this all like, woo, spiritual and like emotions, and I was like, I've got chronic illness, I'm fucking dying here, like, if somebody doesn't get me out of this hole, if I can't figure this out, I'm gonna kill myself, like, I can't handle this. I was just laying there, blind, bedridden, 23 and a half hours a day, couldn't function, full-time carer, full disability benefits. I literally just wanted to die. And as I've as I've progressed and improved and I've recovered from this, like don't have chronic fatigue syndrome anymore. I've got energy. I just did a I just did a workout. I just recorded a workout video and I was wearing a Christmas hat as well. So this is like me integrating my emotions. It makes me so uncomfortable to go outside and I mean even now I'm outside. There's people around me, people looking at me, giving me weird looks. I don't care because I've integr I'm I'm integrating this this facet of shame, and sh shame is so connected to your gut, so parts of yourself that you've pushed away because society doesn't accept them. Can you imagine what it's like? I'm, so I'm, I'm in a, I'm standing out at a calisthenics frame, a box, and I'm doing pull-ups, Joanna's recording me on a camera, I've got a, I've got a Christmas hat on, I, I mean, I look stupid, people are looking at me, I look like an idiot, and I don't care. It's, it's great, I love it, it's, it's fun now. And I've integrated this part, and I know as I continue to progress on this, and I'm able to integrate all of these parts of myself that I've pushed away, the, the shame, the the guilt, the, the fear, the sadness, the things that I don't know how to process yet, as I channel these energies in my life consciously, the organisms that need to be there presently, because I've got I've got a, probably an unfair amount of gut issues still, but I'm not going at this with an approach of killer anymore. I'm trying to acknowledge that they're there for a reason. They serve me, and they help me, and they keep me as vital and as healthy as I currently am. And all I'm trying to do is make it so that they don't need to be there anymore. Because as soon as they don't need to be there, I guarantee you, like, 
that, they will be gone. And I'll be completely healthy again. But until I've done this other work, this emotional, this mental, this, these other side of things that as I've healed more and more and more and I've reached plateaus, I've realised it's more than just a physical thing. There's energy behind it. There's emotion. There's behaviour patterns. There's responsibility. There's a lot of stuff. So if you can go into this looking at it from this kind of perspective, this is what holistic means. Holistic doesn't... Holistic has a couple of degrees. So first of all, you've got like Western medicine, mainstream medicine, where they just look at your body as different organ systems and they say, oh, this one's broken, let's fix it. This one's broken, let's fix it. You've got gallstones, let's just chop that out. It's not necessary. Then you've got holistic, which is like what naturopaths are doing and what um, alternative medicine is doing, where they're looking at it like, your body is a whole, a whole organism. The liver affects the gallbladder. The gallbladder affects the digestion. And then you've got this level of holistic, which is like, your mind, your your body, your spirit, your emotions, your behaviours, they are all connected. Every single thing is connected. There, there is no disconnection between your thoughts, your emotions, and your physical body. They're, they are all connected, and they all hold clues as to why you're sick, and how you can recover and heal from these things. So if you can look at it from this perspective, you will find healing. It's just a matter of time. I guarantee it. And I'm not even there yet, and I'm so confident that I'll get there just from what I've seen and what I've witnessed and what I've experienced. So try to implement some of these these things into your into your healing protocol. It's not just the physical, it's the mental, it's the emotional, it's the spiritual. What's your purpose? What are you passionate about? What emotions don't you have access to? Do you meditate? What's your nervous system doing? These are all questions that you need to be asking yourself. So make sure you ask yourself them. If you really want to heal and you're going to do whatever it takes like me, because I wasn't I wasn't staying sick. I wasn't staying in bed. I've got I've got a life to live. I've got I mean look at this. I used to live in England and it was like rainy and cold and really shit over Christmas. And now look at this, like I'm, I'm basically, like that's the beach. That's the harbour. I'm like at the beach. It's 25 degrees. I'm travelling the world. I've got a lovely fiancé. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I've got, a, I've got a job. I've got a career that I absolutely love. It's like life is out there and you have to go and grab it. And healing is a spiritual experience. There is so much more to this than just, I can't live the life that I want to live until I'm healed. It's your illness is what is pushing you towards the life that you need to be able to live and it's the key it's literally the thing it's literally like exactly what you need to do it's the exact path that's going to take you to the life that you could potentially live if you're brave enough and if you're open-minded enough to to go into it and to go into these more alternative sides and think about this in a different perspective i really hope this has been interesting for you i've got a dash because i've got a caller uh, four and i've got to get home yet and I need to go to the shop and I have to do some stuff. So I'm going to go. This has been really fun. If you found this helpful, please let me know. If you need any help with this, with all of these other things that I mentioned, I would, I, it would honestly be my pleasure. Like like I said, this is my job. This is what I do. I help people do this. So if you need a hand with that, please reach out. Let me know. I'll be happy to help. I've got, I've got three Christmas consultations available. These are free calls. I'll give you as much information and insight and I'll literally give you everything for free in this call. There's no like, I'm gonna hold it back unless you come and work with me kind of thing. It's like, I wanna give you everything that you need. And if you feel like that's a little bit overwhelming and I might need a hand with that, we can talk about it. But I'm gonna help you as much as I can. So if you want one of these free Christmas consults, I've got three left. We've had five of them claimed in seven days. So there's three left. So if you want one, make sure you don't miss it. Talk to you soon. Have a good day.